Hello, physics students. I am going to show you how to do that last challenge problem from the lab, the first lab. Okay, so here's the program that we started with uh, for motion with a constant acceleration. Uh, start with x equals zero, start at the t is equal to zero, the velocity is 4.45, the acceleration was 0.2, time step of 0.1, and then we, we do this loop, we update the velocity, update the position, update the time, and then once you get to t equals 1.5, it stops and you print the position and you get 0.195. Okay, so that's that was that. Now, the problem was, if the acceleration is negative 0.02 meters per second, how long does it take to stop? So let's just do this. I'm gonna say negative change acceleration, and now I'm gonna run it. I get 0.651, but did it stop? I mean, think about what's happening. The car is moving along and it's slowing down, but I want to know when it stopped. This program runs until it's 1.5 seconds. So how about this? We can, let's just do this simple way, print V. So I want to print the velocity after this time. It did not stop. It's only going a little bit slower. So how could I find out when it stopped? Well, what if I change this to 2.5? What if I run it for 2.5 seconds? Now it's going even slower. So you see this idea of, well, I'm just gonna keep changing this to 12.5 until it stops. It's getting closer. Let's try 18.5. I'm just guessing here. And you, this is, there's nothing wrong with this solution. You can say that's not elegant. I say that's fine, it doesn't matter. Very close. Okay, let's try, and I, I really don't remember this time, so I'm just guessing. Let's just say 21. And it doesn't have to be 0.5, I'll delete that just to make you feel better. Okay, a little bit more, 23. Okay, there, it stopped at, let's see, 22. Okay, one times to the negative two. That's close enough for me. Okay, so right there. I have the answer. How long does it take to stop? 22 seconds. The velocity is zero. Where does it stop? Print x. 5.038 meters. Done. Okay. That's one way to solve it. Now, there's another way to solve it. If I don't want to do this guessing game, I don't have to. Watch this. What if I say, do the following loop as long as the velocity is positive? So if I say v greater than zero, now I'm going to print the time. So this is going to keep changing the velocity, and it's going to keep doing this and changing the time and change the position until the velocity is negative. Uh, actually, let's print the velocity. So essentially zero, barely below zero, and stopped. So now I can print the time. 22.5 seconds. So that's probably a better answer than what we had before. I can print x. Five point. And then let me just say one more thing. I could say uh, print x equals x meters. That way it looks cooler. Print v equals v meters per second. Print t equals t seconds and then run that. Okay, one more thing. Let's just do this. What if I put print this statement right here, I'm gonna cut it and put it up here, indented. Now it's gonna print the velocity every single time, which is dumb, but you can see how it changes. So see now it's, it's kind of long, but now it's going and slowing down. You could do that if you wanted to and just find the velocity where it stopped. But that's one way to solve this problem. But there are many ways to solve the problem. Don't think that there is only one elegant way to do it. It doesn't matter. As long as you get it done, it, it gets done. That's fine. Okay. Hope that helps.